Hey everyone, it's Mari. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. I have a project for the Vicky Booten design team today. I'm going to be creating this 12 by 12 layout that you see on the screen here. I'm going to start off with the um, pattern paper medley. This is the one that has the leaves on the other side. This is my photo. It's a black and white four by six photo with a uh, little bit of a white margin on it. And I my uh, inspiration really for the color scheme was that paper and that die cut piece. I just want to show you all of the die cut packs from the Storyteller collection. There are so many die cuts as part of this collection and um, if you are finding that you're struggling to use them all up, I have a project here today where I used quite a few of these different die cut pieces and I uh, just wanted to share with you how you could actually go about doing that. So just showing you here, this is the sticker book that is also part of the Storyteller collection. So many different embellishments in these packs. They are fantastic. I love them. And so I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and use a bunch of those today. Now this paper in my cutter here is the... Um, this one is called Rendering, and it's the one that has the four by six cut aparts, cut aparts on the back. But I really like this side too, um, just because I feel like it's a, it's a pretty good neutral. And I like how the pattern is relatively subtle, and I really wanted to mix it in with this medley paper. So that's gonna form the horizontal line across my project, kind of grounding my photo. And then of course, this main die cut piece, this floral wreath, I definitely wanted to use this today. I wanted to use those colors, that really beautiful burgundy and the yellows, and a few of the daisy pieces. Uh, as part of the 4x3 cut apart sheet, I'm also going to be using this 4x3 card for the journaling spot. And again, it's got that uh, burgundy color. I really love this long uh, tag. It's uh, long and skinny. And I just really love that uh, as a piece that's going to go on one side of my photograph. I actually end up moving it to the other side, but... I just like the shape of that tag for embellishing this large photograph. And um, I just want, I guess one of the things too I wanted to talk about is using a larger photo like this. If you're doing a one photo layout, sometimes it's nice to use a photo that's larger. And lots of times I will use a four by three photo, but today I wanted to challenge myself myself to use this photo as a four by six just because it's such an adorable photo and I really want it to stand out here on this project. Um, the bingo card in burgundy is also going to be one of the embellishments that I'm using here today and I do end up using this wreath of course because it's the main piece that I really wanted to use on this project but I do end up trimming it in half and using it in two different places. Now I want to show you this little um piece that I created here. It's kind of like a little clothesline piece, I guess you might call it. I've strung together a bunch of little embellishment clusters here. These are all bits from the different embellishment packs. I've distressed each of the little pieces with my paper distressing tool and I have taken my darning needle and I've uh, just threaded through some embroidery cotton floss and this is a, just a white uh, twine or or cloth um, twine it's not cloth twine it's uh, like a cotton twine that you can see is going through each little kind of embellishment cluster some of the little pieces I have created just using bits of leftover paper but um, almost all of those little bits that I've used in each one of those three little embellishment clusters come from those different embellishment packs and this is a really great way to use up a bunch of embellishments um, on a layout. I'm also going to be using some of the cardstock stickers from the uh, cardstock sticker sheet. Love this. These sticker sheets are so good. So many great pieces on there for embellishing your different projects. And so I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of those. I've also got one of the um, sticker book stickers up in the very top left hand corner there that I'm thinking about using there. And pretty much the edges of all of the different papers I'm using except for the paper that's my background, my medley paper. I didn't distress the edges of that. That's my base paper. But all of the other papers that I'm using on the layout, I did uh, go ahead and use my distressing tool. And I'm going to use that distressing tool on this journaling spot too. I will smooth this out later. You can just see that it's getting kind of a little bit rumpled. But once I use my um, adhesive on the back of it, it's going to get all nicely smoothed out. 
and that will be perfect. Now I am going to just cut a little bit off the end of this rendering paper here. I don't want it to go from edge to edge because I am going to use some other pattern papers as well with that strip and I'll show you that when I get to that spot. But again, just going in with my paper distress tool and distressing this uh, piece of paper. This is probably about, I wanna say at this point, it's probably about 2.5 inches, probably by about 11. And so that's just, you know, it's not quite to the edge of the paper. And there you can see it's just wide enough to form that little spot where I can go ahead and start placing my photo, my photo mat, and the different embellishments on either side. So going ahead as well, and I'm going to distress that tag. If you don't like this look and you just like everything to be smooth, obviously you would not have to do this. I just really like the texture that distressing the edges of the papers um, creates that just that little bit of extra interest with the different pieces and not that these pieces aren't interesting but I just feel like that the texture that it adds is just worth that little bit of effort that it takes to go ahead and distress the edges of those papers and I will as I usually do um, link up that tonic distressing tool in the description box below if you're looking for that it is a tool that I use on just about every layout I love that tool I can't even believe how it's still sharp because I have had it probably for I don't know I out 15 to 20 years because it's like one of the first things that I bought as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator a really long time ago and it's just a really really good tool. Um, I don't know if Stampin' Up! still sells it but Tonic definitely does. Now so you can see here the layout starting to come together where I have things put on the project. I have again I have um, go ahead I have <laughs> gone ahead and threaded uh, the the um, twine through those different little embellishment clusters, just kind of getting an idea of placement here at this point, trying to sort out where I want everything to go. Once I kind of have things positioned where I want them, I will take a photograph with my phone of where I want them before I start um, actually sticking things down. So I'm going to go ahead and take the wreath there that I have trimmed out. I'm going to put one piece on each different side of my photo mat layer. I'm going to put one there and then one over to the side of the journaling card that kind of just makes everything sort of like come together. It looks like a little bit more cohesive in that way or adds cohesiveness to the um, embellishments that I'm adding in. So um, that little wreath does have the little daisies on it and I've used the little daisies in a few other places as well. Now this is the um, assemblage paper here, that burgundy paper that kind of looks like corduroy or a little bit of a herringbone pattern on it kind of and so I'm going to go ahead and get that stuck down. I have cut a strip that's probably about an inch and a half to two inches wide uh, by 12 and then I've got a tiny little um, strip of the quill paper. So this is the assemblage paper that I'm using here. Beautiful. I love that. And again, that's the coordinating color that I wanted. I'm also using a little strip of this quill paper. It's um, just, you know, that black tonal and it's just got that really interesting pattern on it. I think it's super cool. I'm not putting it right in the middle of the assemblage paper. I'm, I'm uh, putting it a little bit above center and just to make it look a little bit more interesting, I guess. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that rendering paper on top and then I will build the rest of the project on there. Just going to distress that a little bit just with my fingernail, which is also something you could do if you don't have the distressing tool. And just kind of, you know, in my mind thinking about if, is that sort of like the right spot where I want that. And I'm just going to go ahead and commit and get that stuck down. So now I wanted to add a little bit of adhesive that has got some dimension to the back of my photo. So this is just some really inexpensive craft foam from Michaels. And I'm going to add that to the back of my photo and then stick that to another piece of the quill paper. And I believe that this might even be from the eight by six paper pad. And I will distress the edge of that as well. And I really like that darker frame around my photo for my photo mat. Just draws the attention a little bit more even to that photo. Although it definitely will be the focal point since it is such a large photo. 
and such a sweet photo too. I love it. Super cute. So I'm just going to make sure I have that centered on there. And now I will be able to go ahead and get all of those different pieces that I had laid out in place before and start getting those stuck down. So I have everything all added, uh, stuck down and attached with uh, a little bit of liquid adhesive, from some foam adhesive. And here you can see now I'm just adding a few of the little gold uh, foil hearts from the cardstock sticker sheet. I have also added the word today from the chipboard alphas from Storyteller. And I've added that just to the bottom right of the photograph there. And I wanted to add a few of these little foil hearts in a few different places on the project here, just because I really love the addition of that gold. And I just wanted a little kind of pop of gold here and there on the project. So I think I'm actually going to add three different hearts here. And I'm adding them with a little bit of glue dot adhesive just to give them a little bit of um, lift and dimension. I did add a um, yellow ticket underneath that today sticker that's up at the top left there. Just added a little yellow ticket there and I added that today sticker on there with a little bit of foam adhesive and then that heart and here you can see I'm adding another one of those gold hearts just to that little daisy area there and then I've added another one to the photo um, just to the left where that wreath is I actually think I move that one down a little bit I'm gonna move that down just a little bit lower I don't want all of the hearts to sort of like line up in a diagonal row I kind of want them to have a be a little bit angular with each other so I just tried to attempt that there and I think I mostly finished getting things stuck down. I did add another little sticker tab that says details above the photo. And I also added some staples, a few little puffy stickers from the puffy sticker sheet and some twine to the tag. And just showing you some different things that I added in. And of course that today um, title that's with the chipboard um, alphas that are part of the collection and there's lots of space there for journaling on that journaling card so really love how that all came together I love those little embellishment clusters below that are part that are added with that twine I think that looks really neat now I just wanted to add some gold splatters to finish off so I'm just using a little bit of Heidi Swap color shine to um, add that gold shimmer and shine to the project just to coordinate with the different little bits of gold pops of gold on the project I think it just looks really nice and I'm being pretty liberal I'm not really too worried about how thick I'm getting this on here just because I think it does look really nice and I will show you that up close when I'm all finished here don't forget to check the description box below I have linked up uh, the products that I have used today in the description box you can click on those links and shop for any of these products if you'd like those are affiliate links so I do get a tiny little commission for those um items if you do click those links and shop and I do appreciate that if you do that that's at no extra cost to you I'm just showing you here in the light I'm just going to pick this up I actually I'm going to just turn another light on over here to the side and show you how really nice and shiny that gold is on there I just love how that just adds a little bit of extra pizzazz to the project and so hopefully this gave you some inspiration for using up some of those embellishments that you may still have as part of the storyteller collection there's so many great embellishments with this collection and it's one of my favorite things about this collection is just the all of the different choices you have thanks so much for stopping by today and I have linked up to a couple of other videos here from uh, Vicki Booten and storyteller if you'd like to check those out don't forget to like and subscribe stay safe and I'll See you, here, see you here again on my channel next time.